We've been doing top 10 lists on the channel, but top 10 is boring. Top 10 is washed. We're actually going to do a top 30 list. We are going to be ranking the best shortstops on every team in 2024. And there have been some recent developments that have made this list a little bit tougher to make, but we're going to give it a go. Number 30 is going to be Nick Allen from the Oakland Athletics. Allen is slated to be the opening day shortstop for the Athletics, and he had a really bad year at the plate with a 221, 263, and a 287 slash line for a 550 OPS and an OPS plus of 58. He was just really bad at the plate. He doesn't strike out much, but he doesn't really do anything else well. He's not a terrible defender, but I won't be surprised if he wasn't the starting shortstop by mid-May, maybe even earlier than that. Number 29 is going to be new Chicago White Sox Paul DeYoung. It's been a really steep decline for Paul DeYoung since he was an all-star in 2019, and he had a better year than in 2022, but that's not really saying much. In 2023, he slashed 207 with a 258 on base and 355 slug for an OPS of 612, hitting 14 home runs. He has decent range as shortstop and will pop the occasional home run, but he's been brutal at the plate the last several years, and he's probably only going to be the shortstop until Colson Montgomery is ready. Number 28 is going to be new Marlon, Tim Anderson. Now, Tim Anderson was one of the worst players in baseball last year at any position. He didn't hit his first home run until July 29th. He slashed 245 with a 286 on base and a 296 slugging percentage for a 582 OPS, all while not playing good defense in the field. I know by a number standpoint that he was the worst shortstop in baseball in 2023. I have him a bit above the guys below him on this list because I feel like there's something else going on. The drop off was incredibly sudden. I just think he's going to bounce back somewhere what I still think he has skill. What if he doesn't bounce back at least somewhat? I can't really see him in baseball in 2025. Number 27 is going to be Brian Rokey of the Cleveland Guardians. Rokey is one of the top prospects in the Guardians organization. He got called up for 23 games last year where he hit 247 with a 600 OPS. He projects to have an all right hit tool and a decent defender, but he won't wow you with anything else. Until we see more from Brian, I think here is a good place. Number 26 is going to be Mason Wynn with the St. Louis Cardinals. Mason Wynn is the top prospect in the Cardinals organization, and he was doing well enough in AAA to get the call of the majors, but he performed horribly at the plate. Finishing with a 468 OPS and a just a 29 OPS plus. Granted, it's a very small sample size, but you'd like to see a little bit more there from your top prospect. The reason I'm not ranking him lower is because of his defensive ability and his speed. He plays very good defense and has a cannon for an arm. And he does have the ability to hit. He has shown that in the minors, hitting 288 in AAA last year. If he can put it together at the plate, he could move up this list quickly. Number 25 is going to be Marco Luciano for the San Francisco Giants. Although Marco has been a top prospect for the Giants for several years, I just can't justify putting him up any higher than this right now. He had several at bats last year and produces 641 OPS in total, but he is not known for his defense and he hasn't played much in the minors the last couple years, but he does absolutely crush the ball when he does play. And his average exit velocity does look encouraging. I will happily eat my words if he plays like he belongs much higher on this list in 2024. Number 24 is going to be Javi Baez for the Detroit Tigers. And I just can't believe that Baez is this low. He's had one of the sharper declines of recent memory. He was even on the cover of MLB The Show in 2020, but he was miserable at the plate last year with an OPS under 600 and finishing with an OPS plus of 62. What's keeping him from dropping down further on this list is his defense at short. He still had a positive war last year and he still has a tremendous glove and his terrific range over at shortstop as well as a good arm. I really just want the electric hobby by his back. He needs to keep up his defensive ability if his bat is going to keep going downhill. And let's be honest, there's not that much further downhill for it to go right now. At number 23, I have Jorge Mateo of the Baltimore Orioles. I want to preface this by saying that Mateo will only likely be at shortstop until Jack Jackson Holiday gets called up. I'm also going to be putting Gunner at the third base list because I believe he will more likely go over to third base once Jackson gets the call. So Oriole fans, I'm sorry if you expected to see Gunner or Jackson Holiday here. This is what made sense to me. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, though. You know your team better than I do. For a little bit in 2023, Jorge Mateo looked like he was going to have a breakout season after his scorching April, but he crashed hard in May and had an OPS of 500 or worse in May, June, and July. Gunner Henderson ended up taking a lot of time at shortstop due to Mateo's struggles, and Mateo Mateo finished the year with an OPS of only 607 and OPS plus of 70, but he did steal 32 bags and he's a very good base runner overall. Although that's about all he ended up doing well. He's about average on defense. And like I said, he's probably not going to be there for long if he is at shortstop opening day. Number 22 is going to be Jose Caballero for the Tampa Bay Rays. Caballero was acquired by the Rays from the Mariners in the Luke Rayleigh trade to help him out with their sudden need for a shortstop. And we all know why he got most of his playing time in Seattle a second, but he did really well when he played shortstop due to his speed. Right Right now, he's slated to be the opening day starting shortstop for the Rays, and there are a couple things he does really well. He only hit 221, but he had a 343 on base and 231 at bats, and that goes along with playing pretty good defense. He also stole 26 bags in that short amount of playing time. So there's a couple things to really like about Jose. It's going to be interesting to watch the shortstop position play out for the Rays. Number 21 is going to be Geraldo Perdomo for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Perdomo's second full season as the D-back starting shortstop was much more successful than his rookie year. He had a much better slash line of 246, 3 
353 on base and a 359 slugging for an OPS of 712, an OPS plus of 96 than he did in 2022. He actually made his first all-star team in 2023, and that was partly due to a really strong first half of the season. He struggled pretty hard after the all-star break, posting an OPS of just 610. And he also didn't play great defense at short with a negative five defensive run saved at the position. But despite Perdomo's offensive struggles, he still manages to take a considerable amount of walks and gets on base at a pretty high clip. If he played the full season as well in his first half, he'd be a lot higher on this list. Number 20 is going to be Zach Noda for the Los Angeles Angels. And last year was Zach Noda's rookie year. He played about half the season with the big club after getting called up and slashed 225, 308 with a 377 slugging and a 685 OPS with an 86 OPS plus, hitting nine home runs and stealing five bases. So he was below average with the bat last year, but where he showed some strength was his defense putting up three defensive runs saved. Neto, as well as his teammate Nolan Shanwell, did not get a whole lot of minor league experience between getting drafted and being promoted to the majors. Neto only got 147 total at bats in 2022 professionally and only 40 at bats last year in the minors before getting called up in 2023. So it will be interesting to see how he adjusts in a full season as the Angels starting shortstop. I believe he's going to take a step forward. Number 19 was Ezekiel Tovar from the Colorado Rockies. 2023 was Tovar's rookie season with the Rockies and he slashed 253 with a 287 on base and a 408 slugging for an OPS of 695 and an OPS plus of just 77. The big thing that is weighing down on Ezekiel Tovar's game overall is his strikeout to walk ratio. He struck out 166 times while only walking 25 times. But there are some things he does well. He has a little bit of pop with 15 home runs and he hit 37 doubles. I know the core's effect may be in play a little bit. He is a fantastic defender though with great speed and ended last season with 13 defensive runs saved. If he can take a step forward with approach at the plate, he could increase his overall play tremendously. Number 18 is going to be Trevor Story for the Boston Red Sox. And Story has been super unlucky with injuries since signing with Boston in 2022. Last year, he just appeared in 43 games, putting up a 566 OPS and 158 at bats. And the last year he put up more than 100 games was back in 2021 with the Rockies, where he kind of had a down year from what we were used to. It's hard to really gauge what we are going to get with Story, especially now that he's a little bit older. I think you can absolutely justify him being lower on this list, but I don't think I'm just ready to do that yet. I want to see what he gives us this year. I just hope he's healthy because when he's healthy, he can still be very good. But for now, I just can't put him any higher than this. Number 17 is going to be Orlando Arcia for the Atlanta Braves. And Orlando did very well in his first season filling in for Dansby Swanson. He had a very strong first half, which got him to the All-Star game as the NL starter, but he cooled off in the second half a little bit. He ended up finishing with an OPS of 741 and a slightly below league average OPS plus with a 98. He did hit 17 home runs, 25 doubles. He doesn't strike out an insane amount, but he also doesn't walk a great amount. And he wasn't great on the field this past season with negative seven defensive runs saved, but he does have okay range and put up four outs above average. It's going to be interesting to see what he gives us as the Braves starting shortstop for the second straight season. This might be a little bit controversial, but I'm putting Ellie De La Cruz as 16 for the Cincinnati Reds. Ellie De La Cruz had a ton of hype surrounding him before he made his debut, and he still has a lot of hype in my opinion. And he started off living up to that hype in his debut, carrying an 881 OPS through the first month in the majors. He cooled off a lot afterwards and didn't have an OPS over 700 in a single month after June. He ended up slashing 235 with a 300 on base and a 410 slugging with a 710 OPS and an 89 OPS plus. He did hit 13 home runs and he did steal 35 bags. And he's one of the fastest players in baseball. His lefty righty splits really hurt his overall numbers with an OPS under 500 against lefties, but he still did very well against righties. He also didn't really have a good year defensively, putting up negative three defensive runs saved, but he is so talented and he has immense potential. If he can become a bit more consistent against lefties and develop a little bit better skill defensively, he can be very good in 2024. Number 15 is going to be Anthony Volpe for the New York Yankees. Now Volpe had a very solid rookie season and for some he lived up to the hype. He put up a 2020 season with 21 home runs and 24 stolen bases, although the rest of his hitting numbers aren't incredible. He ended up finishing with a 666 OPS and a below league average 81 OPS plus, which is kind of weird to look at having a 2020 season and having an OPS plus that low comparatively. But what Volpe did really well last year was playing the field. He had 15 defensive runs saved. If he could find a little bit more balanced approach at the plate, he's going to skyrocket up this list. But as for now, middle of the pack is where he will land. Number 14 is going to be O'Neill Cruz from the Pittsburgh Pirates. I really want to see O'Neill climb this list of overall shortstops, but his lack of playing time is holding him back big time. He only played nine games last year after finishing sixth in the rookie of the year voting in 2022. We saw some really good things from him, and he hits the ball extremely hard, and he has blazing speed. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he has the hardest hit ball in the StatCast era. I know the sample size last year was extremely small, but we saw some encouraging things. He already accumulated one fourth of the walks he accumulated all of 2022 in those nine games, which could mean absolutely nothing, but I'm going to be an optimist right now. He has the potential. We just really need to see him healthy for a full season. 
At number 13, I have Jeremy Pena for the Houston Astros. Jeremy Pena took a little bit of a step back this year offensively after placing fifth in the Rookie of the Year voting in 2022. He hit for a little less power and he had below league average OPS plus with a 95. He hit 10 home runs this year, which is down from 22 home runs in 2022. But there are some encouraging things that he did improve on at the plate. He almost doubled his walks from 22 to 43, which is still low, but still an improvement. And he did decrease his strikeout rate slightly. His glove is always going to play though as he won the gold glove in 2022 and he has excellent speed and excellent range putting up a seven defensive run save. He's still young and there's still room for improvement there. Number 12 is going to be CJ Abrams from the Washington Nationals. 2023 was Abrams first full season in the base and he made some very big improvements to his offensive game. He finished up with an OPS plus of 95 which is a big improvement from 2022's total of 75 which is still below league average but a huge improvement to 2022's OPS plus of 75. He also showed a low bit of pop hitting 18 home runs and he stole 47 bags 33 of those came after the all-star break i'm not really sure what flipped a switch in his head or they just gave him the green light at any point but that's a big increase from first half to second half stolen bases and a big thing holding him back here is his lefty righty splits where he had a 512 ops against lefties compared to a 786 against righties he doesn't play amazing defense but he doesn't necessarily hurt you out there either the improvement to how he hits the ball is very encouraging and i'm excited to see what he does in 2024 number 11 is going to be willie adamas from the milwaukee brewers he's looking to pop off because he did not have such a great 2023 he hit 217 with a 310 on base and a 407 slugging for a 717 ops hitting 24 home runs however what he lacked at the plate last year he really made up for in defense accumulating eight defensive runs saved and 16 outs above average that makes back-to-back -back strong seasons in the field but it makes for back-to-back -back decreasing offensive production years and in a contract year i'm expecting bigger things from adamas at the plate in 2024 he's just too good not to have a better year than last year number 10 i have carlos correa from the minnesota twins carlos had an extremely down year last year and i know he was battling some injuries and that's why i can't put him out of the top 10 just yet overall he slashed 230 with a 312 on base and a 399 slugging percentage for an ops of 711 ops plus of 94 that is just so unlike carlos correa his power numbers were about the same as last year as far as home runs and extra base hits go but he led the american league in grounding into double plays with 30 of them he just didn't really look good he just wasn't good in the field last year as well i know he's playing through some injuries so that's probably a big reason for his struggles i'm giving him 2024 if he has the same type of year this year than he did in 2023 there's no way i can keep him in the top 10 it was very hard for me to put him over willie damas but i just don't think that we saw the real carlos correa in 2023 number nine is going to be ha Seong kim from the san diego padres and the padres just made it official that kim will be the opening day shortstop for the padres and he had a breakout year last year at the plate he had 260 with a 351 on base and a 398 slugging for a 749 ops and a 110 ops plus he also had 17 home runs and stole 38 bases and it seems like every year he's been in the major since coming over from the kbo he has gotten much better at the plate now he doesn't have a ton of pop i'd be surprised if he hits more than 20 home runs but he excels in getting on base and it's apparent that stolen bases are now a part of his game he's also very strong in the field winning gold glove at second base and he could translate nicely to shortstop he's always been a strong defender he started 16 games at short last year and he accumulated three defensive runs saved in that short of time it seems like he gets better every year and will that progress continue i'm excited to find out number eight i have jp crawford of the seattle mariners now crawford is definitely coming off the best season he's ever had at the plate he slashed 266 with a 380 on base and a 438 slugging for an ops of 818 and a 131 ops plus he went to driveline last year and it showed he hit 19 home runs which is double his previous career high he had a career high in walks with 94 which led the american league he also received mvp votes for the first time in his career he's not as good of a defender as he used to be with a negative three defensive run saved in 2023 but he has taken tremendous strides to improve his game at the plate and he definitely deserves to be in the top 10 in my opinion this might ruffle some feathers but at number seven i'm gonna have trey turner for the philadelphia phillies the baseball world was a little bit worried after trey turner when he started off his phillies tenure with a miserable 688 ops in the first half but the philly faithful came all together and gave him a standing ovation early in august that powered him back to his former self putting an ops in the second half over 900 he ended up with 26 home runs and 30 stolen bases and an ops plus of 111 but this was his lowest ops plus over a full season since 2018 where it was an even 100 trey has never been a great defender but this year was arguably his worst with negative 12 defensive runs saved and a negative four outs above average trey is entering his second season with philly so there's a chance he was getting acclimated to a new environment and an environment in philadelphia is a tough one to play in if you're not doing so hot so mad props to the philadelphia fan base for giving him a standing ovation i really hope that he continues what he did in the second half in 2024 baseball is just better when trey turner's performing up to that level i will happily eat my words if he does but for right now 
I just don't think I can put him higher than the guys I have above him. And coming in at number six is going to be Dansby Swanson for the Chicago Cubs. This was Dansby's first full season with the Cubs on a new contract, and he had a pretty good year overall. He slashed 244 with a 328 on base and a 416 slugging percentage for an OPS of 744 and an OPS plus of right at 99, about at league average. He was a little bit down at the plate compared to last year, but over the last three years or so, he's been pretty consistent. He's going to give you a little bit of pop with at least 20 home runs, and he's going to play tremendous defense at short, winning two straight gold gloves. He actually had 18 defensive runs saved and 20 outs above average last year, and that is tremendous. You pair that with an OPS plus of 99, and that's an incredibly good shortstop. This is also the second year in a row he's ended up getting MVP votes, and overall, he finished with a five-war season. It's crazy that Trey Turner and Dansby Swanson just missed out on the top five, but in my opinion, there's a couple guys better than them right now. Starting the top five is going to be Bo Bichette from the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, Bo Bichette had a typical Bo Bichette year last year, hitting right around 300 with 20-some home runs. He was on pace to lead the AL in base hits for the third time in a row before he got hurt in August. He was an all-star, and he finished 16th place in the MVP voting. He's just been so consistent at the plate ever since taking over shortstop for the Jays in 2020. His lowest OPS plus has been 121, while the highest has been 128. He also improved a lot on the defensive side of things last year. He went from having negative 16 defensive runs saved in 2022 to having plus five defensive runs saved in 2023. The one thing I can kind of knock on Bo Bichette's offensive ability is his walk rate. If he can convert some of the strikeouts he has to walks or hits, he could be even better. At number four, I'm going to have Bobby Wood Jr. for the Kansas City Royals. I think it's safe to say that Bobby Wood Jr. has arrived. He put up a tremendous season last year and was one stolen base away from getting the 30-50, 30, 30 home runs, 50 stolen bases. I was actually in attendance when he got caught trying to steal number 50. Bobby just does everything well. He hits for power. He hits for average. He steals bases. He has tremendous speed and defensive ability. He finished seventh in the MVP voting last year. The one weakness in his game right now is his ability to take walks, similar to Bo Bichette, but he did improve on that slightly last year. He even cut down his strikeouts a little bit. If he learns to take those walks, it is possible we see a future number one on the list, but for now, there's a couple guys better than him. And number three on the list, I'm going to have Francisco Lindor from the New York Mets. Francisco Lindor has quietly become one of the most underrated players in baseball, in my opinion, but he put up one of the most quiet 30-30 seasons that I can recall, as well as a super quiet 6.0 war season. He ended up finishing ninth in the MVP voting for the second time in a row and winning the Silver Slugger. His career OPS plus is 117, and he finished right around there with a 120 this year. And he had a great defensive year again with seven defensive runs saved. I think you can make an argument that Bobby Wood Jr. had a better year overall, but the consistency on a yearly basis is just incredible, and that's what gets him number three in my book. Coming in at number two is going to be Mookie Betts, newly appointed shortstop for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now I know what you're going to say. Mookie Betts has never played a full season as shortstop, and that's a fair argument. Last year, he did get some time there with 12 games, and he did okay. He did okay. He had zero defensive runs saved in those 12 games, but overall, what Mookie gives you is just so good. He had one of the best years that the played in baseball last year, and if it wasn't for Ronald Acuna Jr., he would have won the MVP. He had 307 with a 408 on base and a 579 slugging for an OPS of 987 and an OPS plus of 163 with 39 home runs, 107 RBI, and 14 stolen bases. Shortstop is the most important position on the diamond. I agree with you. I just don't think I can bet against Mookie Betts at this point, pun intended. He plays solid defense in multiple positions when he was over at second base. He played great defense over there. Now, if he gives you just okay defense, like league average defense next year, and he hits the way he did, overall, what he gives you is so good. I do think there's an argument for him being lower on this list, but for right now, I just don't think I can bet against Mookie Betts. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm absolutely happy to have this discussion. But that leaves the World Series MVP, Corey Seager, as the number one shortstop in baseball. He just had an unbelievable year hitting 327 with a 390 on base and a 623 slugging for a 1013 OPS and a 170 OPS plus, hitting 33 home runs in just 119 games with a 6.9 war. He also led the league in doubles while missing a quarter of the season. He was insane. He was an all-star. He was second in MVP voting. He won the Silver Slugger. I'm repeating myself, but that was while he missed a quarter of the games. Defense is not something Corey Seager has really been known for, but he had a better season at the position with a positive defensive run saved, and he does it in the clutch, which is an added bonus. We all know the ninth inning home run in game one, which tied the game against the Arizona Diamondbacks in game one of the World Series. He, in fact, went on to win his second World Series MVP, and he's not even 30 yet. At the time of recording, I know he hasn't started playing string training games. I know he's recovering from a hernia surgery, but that shouldn't stop him from having a tremendous 2024. If he gives us 150 games while producing at last year's level, I just don't think there's any way he doesn't win MVP. Let me know what you agree with. Let me know what
which you disagree with. I'm absolutely happy to have conversations. Believe it or not, you all helped me learn this game of baseball and I will never know everything. Consider subscribing if you like the content, want to see more. Opening day in a couple weeks. I'll see you there.